For many, the Super Game Boy brings back fond memories of playing your favorite Game Boy games on the big screen. One of the major flaws is that it did not include a link port, so you weren't able to play some of the multiplayer games that were available at the time. In this video, I'm going to show you how to add a link port to your Super Game Boy. This is Steve from Nostalgia, and let's get started. Alright guys, for this mod we're going to need our Super Game Boy. We're going to need a Nintendo Security Bit to open it up. We're going to need a Phillips head screwdriver. We're going to need our soldering iron, some wire, a craft knife, some Q-tips, some rubbing alcohol, a permanent marker, some lead-free solder. We're going to use this PCB board that's made by Thursday Customs that allows you to connect to your Super Game Boy. We're also going to need a link port, and we're going to need a 5 64th size drill bit. What we're going to need to do is we're going to need to remove the four screws from our Super Game Boy case. Next, we're going to go ahead and move the cover. Now we just need to remove these two screws that hold the board in place to the back plate. Now we're going to grab our Super Game Boy PCB board and we're going to remove the two screws in the front. As you can see, there's two holes where the screws were. We're going to use those to mark out where we need to drill our holes. And here's our marks, so we're going to drill those holes. And there it is. Now we've got our holes drilled all the way through the case. Next, we're going to take our link port and we're going to roughly connect it into the PCB board. And we're going to use that to guide ourselves on where we need to trim the case to allow the new link port to stick out. Now we're going to use it as well to trace the shape of the link port. And there it is. So now is where you're going to use a craft knife to cut it out. Now for this, I'm actually going to use my Dremel tool because it's going to make the job a little bit quicker. And there it is. As you can see, the link port now fits in that little space. Now what we need to do is we're going to go ahead and connect our link port into our PCB board and we're going to solder this together. Now we're going to go ahead and add some flux to our pins and this will just make it easier to solder. And now we're just going to solder all our pins to the board. We're going to go ahead and clean off the excess flux with rubbing alcohol. And there you go. As you can see, my pins are now all soldered in. Alright, so now we need to solder to this chip right here. We're going to be soldering to pins number 68, 69, and 70. We're going to add a little bit of flux. And then we're going to go ahead and solder in all of our wires. It may look messy, but we're going to go ahead and clean that up with some rubbing alcohol at the end and it'll look nice and clean. Next, we need to solder in our ground line and our power line. Just going to add some solder. Be careful not to bridge any of the capacitors or resistors on the board as well. Now we're going to actually connect all the wires to our link port PCB board. As you can see, there are five different connections. The Super Game Boy Link PCB board came with uh, schematics, so you just need to make sure that you're connecting each of the wires to the proper 
uh, pin location. So now we're going to go ahead and solder all of our wires to the board. And it's all connected and everything is nice and firm. Now we're going to go ahead and take our Super Game Boy board and attach it to the case. We need to be sure not to pinch any of the wires, so just take your time while you're putting it back into the case. We need to reattach the two screws that held it in place. Next, we're going to attach our Super Game Boy port. We're going to put the screws through the bottom and the spacers in place to hold everything in place. Then we just need to line it up and screw it in place. Next, we need to move the wires out of the way and make sure they're not in the channel for the game or in the way of the uh, cover for the game case. Now that we've reattached the game case, what we're going to notice is that we need to trim up the top plate just a little bit so it fits a little bit more snugly. We're gonna go ahead and make our marks and then we're just gonna trim it with our craft knife. And there it is. Now we're just going to attach the top plate again. And as you can see, everything fits nice and snug. Now we just need to reattach our four screws holding it all together. And there it is. We've got our Super Game Boy now assembled with a link port. All that's left for us to do is test it and make sure that it works. So let's go ahead and do that. I couldn't think of a better way to test this than to grab some Pokemon games and trade some Pokemon over. We're gonna grab our Super Game Boy and pop one of our games into it. Then we're gonna connect our OEM link port cables. And we're gonna go ahead and pop that into our Super Nintendo. Next, we're gonna grab another Pokemon game and we're gonna pop it into the back of our Game Boy Advance. And we're gonna go ahead and stick the other end of the link port into that as well. Now all we need to do is boot it up. We're also gonna turn on our Game Boy Advance. And I'm gonna to try to keep everything on screen so you guys can see that it is working on both devices. Now I've got these games already pre-saved and ready to roll. They're going to be right in front of the trading area. So we're going to go ahead and talk to the cable club lady. We're going to save our games. And now we're going to go right into the trade center. Alright, so for this, we're going to trade our Flareon. And in return, we're going to go ahead and take our Blastoise. So let's go ahead and see how this works. Now while this is going ahead and making the trade, I do want to mention I am well aware that there is a Super Game Boy 2 that was released in Japan that not only had the link port but also fixed the clock speed of the console. 
Uh, the reason why I think this is a better solution is because Super Game Boy 2s are one, they are a lot more expensive, and two, they would require you to either use a Super Famicom machine or you would have to modify your Super Nintendo in order to fit the cartridge. So I definitely think that this mod is worth it. I'll be sure to leave a link in the description below for all the parts that you need to make this mod work, including some suggested things that I've picked up off Amazon. But there we go, we've got a trade completed, now we know that our link port works properly on our Super Game Boy. That's all I've got for you for this video guys, thanks so much for watching, be sure to subscribe, leave a comment in the comment section below if you have any questions, and I'll talk to you guys again real soon.